Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Drew Locke, lock him down. Big time debut versus the Chargers. We're going to dive into it. Look at a handful of plays really in depth. See exactly where he came out on it. Thought it was a really nice performance. Great win. Great way to compete at the end. I'm really excited to see what the film says. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. Boom! All right, full disclosure here. I am friends and have been coached by the offensive coordinator in Denver right now, Rich Gangarella. He was my quarterback coach in college. Known him, geez, over 20 years now. Scary. Uh, big fan of his. Excited about what he's bringing to this team. Just want to make sure that I mention that in case it comes off as me being a little bit more of a homer than I normally am on this channel. So I appreciate it. Let's dive into it. See what the film says. All right, first play is this third down, huge touchdown. I love this play for so many reasons. Love the fact that it's, again, zero. You know the Chargers all week were saying, all right, this rookie debut, we're going to heat him up once we get in the red zone. He's going to have no idea what's coming. Comes out right out the gate, answers. They block it up pretty well, and this is just a dime. But I love so many things about it. I love the fact that he's able to easily ID it, throw a strike down the field, but I really love the footwork from the pocket. And so it's one of those things where just because it's not perfect, they don't do it perfectly at the offensive line, but this is a dime of a throw. That is a hold by Hayward. That is a ridiculous catch, one-handed, able to hang on to it. Really cool to see the parents celebrate in the stands too. They got so many cameras at these games nowadays, but that is a ridiculous catch. And that is a hold straight up. Rewind right there. He's grabbing the heck out of his arm. Beautiful one-handed catch going to the ground, holding it against your body. Really nice job. Just great. Love the fact third down, heat you up with zero. What do you do? You take a shot down the field. You give your guy a chance. Sutton having a ridiculous year. Great catch. Great play on the ball. So many good things about this play. I'm excited to break down from the All-22 here. So it's one of those things where you have to be able to ID it. Now, obviously, this is really simple to see that it's cover zero. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Really easy to identify zero here. Like this looks like it could be a middle field player, but because we're in a bunch here, we know that these three have these three. This is zero. We got bump man on the backside. So right here, we know we got issues. This looks like a punt rush right here. We basically have two A-gap players. We'll be able to see it from the tight. Two A-gap players, linebackers. Then we have a free safety walked up with four defensive linemen. Seven guys at the line of scrimmage. We only have five offensive linemen and a back. There's a chance we're going to get heated up here. So what do we do? We want to have a shot down the field. Zero. We want to take a shot to the go. Another good option is to the post. DBs are going to know that that's what you're trying to do. You got to hit him with speed. Give your guy a chance to go make a play on the ball. And then we're probably going to have a free rusher. It's either going to be this DB type or the widest guy. So how they figure out, how they sort it out. Now, the thing I love about it is what Drew Locke does with his footwork here. At the top of his drop, no heel click. All your cleats in the ground. Give yourself a chance to throw a strike. One, two, three, sit. No panic. No no craziness, just pause, let it go, give your guy a chance. Just a great job being able to see it, throw this thing. That middle field player, if it's not zero, he's way cheating over to the bunch. He has no chance to go make a play like that, and that's a ridiculous catch. But again, this all comes down to this tight window for me. It's third and eight, third and six, doesn't matter what it is. There's a guy outside the screen. So again, this is not the look you love playing quarterback. Double A gap, Mike Zimmer special. We got four defensive linemen right here, and two of them are really good. I think Bosa's right here, and Ingram's right here. So we got two really good players on the same side, and we got two A-gap players, linebacker types, and then we have a free safety who's not in the picture. I think he's right off the edge here. So the essence of this thing here is you got to figure out how you're going to block all six of these guys, and then you're going to have this DB coming free. I think they end up dropping probably Ingram, someone on the away from the pressure. Let's see what they do here. There it is. Oh, they hit you with a little delay too. That's nice. So it looks like what they're doing here is just a three-man slide. We're figuring this out together. It looks like the offensive line is going here. So we're getting a three-man slide. The center, these three right here are going to those three. Boom, boom, boom. The back is going to go right here from one to two. He's off the screen, the free safety. So we're going to get locked up right here. We're locked up right here. So the back, if we get heated off here, and he comes with this cool little delay blitz that you don't see very often, so he hits it like a little out, and I think we get a little stunt. He comes in. The back's going to then step up, get him. Now the tackle essentially is going to take the most dangerous. Probably going to always be the defensive end out here. So we get hit with the defensive end, and then one other guy comes out from the outside, the free safety. He's going to be the free runner. But I really want to pay it. First, we'll watch the pass pro a handful of times here. There it is. Cool little delay stunt. 
Back does a great job picking up the most dangerous inside out. Got two on him. Theoretically, if you're that right tackle, depending on how they teach it, I, I'd say you probably want to stay with the defensive end in that case because the guy's coming from depth. But you could see him taking the inside guy there if they're really locked in. Either way, I'm fine with him taking the defensive end. Let the DB type be the free runner, even if he comes from that kind of depth and isn't the outside player. But the thing I love about this the most is the footwork from the quarterback. One, two, three. All his cleats in the ground right there. It's worth watching because this is zero. This is as hard as it gets. Quick little shuffle. All his cleats in the ground. No heel click. Doesn't have to take a huge step. Got strong enough torque to be able to throw this thing. And it's a dime down the field. And then that's a ridiculous catch. You got to do all those things. And then you got to beat a really good DB. There's Kings. A little bar in his face. Can't barely see him. But again, that's a great throw. I love the footwork from the quarterback position. Just really good stuff. Again, really important down here. Third and goal from just inside the five. What are they going to do? Again, the footwork, perfect, in my opinion, at the top of the drop. One, two, three, all his cleats in the ground, sound, able to move and throw a strike. Now, there's some issues here. Look at it from the TV copy here about what goes on here. I'm, I think, in my opinion, there's some sort of miscommunication or else we got, hey, we're going rogue here. Either way, I think we get a little flat here from the back and then we get like a little corner route or a little flat seven circus route from Sutton. Either way, pretty sure Hayward doesn't play this correctly from the corner position. Doesn't matter. You still have to be able to see it and throw it. He's guessing out there a little bit. You can do that in the red zone because you can't. You don't have to give depth. And yeah, that is two in one quarter, I think. Great job. But I love the fact what I see from Locke from the pocket. And it's that footwork that's going to give you a consistent base to be able to be accurate and move and throw from a really consistent platform all the time. Now, I don't know if you're always going to get two, two touchdowns in your first quarter playing, but a really nice job. And here, here's the confusion. You got to be able to see it. You can't rely on these type of things. Like there's a little bit of luck, no doubt, that goes into a guy being this wide open on a third down and goal. But you still have to be able to see it and throw it. I'm not making excuses for him. You still got to be able to see it, throw it. Love that little quick, sudden movement. Keep his eyes down the field and throw a good enough ball. Put it right on him. Easy touchdown. Really nice. I mean, it's they're definitely taking advantage of a guy whose the technique isn't great from the corner by any means. But you got to be able to see it and throw it. So we're just going to get a little flat and that little out or corner route with the corner Hayward guessing and he's wide open. But again, it's worth paying attention to just the footwork at the top of the drop one right there. Really nice. Sinks a little bit, real subtle movement, be able to keep his eyes down the field and throw a strike. Two really nice plays. The, the first one, zero touchdown was beautiful. This one is a little bit, I think, just fortunate, but you still have to be able to see it and throw it. Nice, subtle movement right up on his face. Take advantage of a DB mistake. Got to do it. Okay, so the next one, another third down here, third and five. Now, this one to me is now things aren't necessarily going exactly our way. So a lot of teams do this. We've talked about it many times on this channel. Bring this guy in. You get a man's own check. Either way, this to me, this looks like a bracket coverage. And it looks like they're trying to show middle field closed man here. But they come down. They're definitely bracketing. You see that middle field player? He's creeping down. That's his, this is going to be a bracket or a pressure. They're only bringing four. Oh, that's a ridiculous spin move, too. We'll show from the tight. But this is just a bracket cover, so make sure we're all on the same page here. This is middle field close right here. This looks like middle field close, man up. If you're playing, you have, would have, through film study, have to know that there's an opportunity for, this would be just, to me, just straight up lurk. 11 lurk. Free safety coming down to be the middle field player. But as soon as this middle field player starts creeping down, they have the capacity now to what a lot of teams call double the stars, where you can pick which guy on offense you're going to double. So it looks like they're doubling the number three. So these two right here are working right here. So if he comes up and runs across the field, the inside player will take him. Same thing up top here. You got two guys, again, two guys playing one right here. We got two guys coming down, playing one right here. Everybody else is manned up across the board. So they do a nice job. Locke does a nice job being able to identify it and throw it to the right guy. He just misses. And I don't know if he misses because of where the running, where the route takes him or because it's a poor throw. I'm going to guess that this is just a poor throw, but you never really know unless you're in the quarterback room. Nobody does. But again, just ID the coverage here. This is a cool coverage. You don't see a whole lot of bracket like this from third and five. This is more of like a 
I don't know. To me, it's more of a, a third and long, almost like a red zone ish area play. You're gonna really put you you roll the dice a little bit because there's nobody in the middle of the field. If you were to run up and run a post by this number two player, he'd be in a lot of trouble. You can see this number two corner down here at the bottom of the screen. He's playing the post. He knows he's got nobody inside of him. Right here. He's playing that post area. So you want to come up and throw this go. You just have to give him a chance on the surface, on, on his track. We'll see it from the tight, really hard. He gets smacked here by Ingram, who's got a ridiculous spin. But again, this to me is a bad miss. Again, I love the footwork so much at the top of the drop. Look at this thing. One, two, three. No heel clip. It's not really a smooth three. It's almost like a shuffle hybrid drop. But the, the top of it. All his cleats in the ground, no heel click. He's still able to get that thing off, even though he gets blasted. And getting blasted might have impacted the accuracy of this thing, but this is a bad miss, in my opinion. Now, Ingram 54 right here puts a ridiculous Dwight Freeney on 66. Really nice, tight spin move. And I think he does rush his throw. It looks like he almost double clutches it. Either way, you'd like to see him make a better throw here. This is a right identification, but that's a this is a bad miss. You got to give your guy a chance. That's another shot at a huge opportunity. You see him running down. This is his track. And you don't know how they talk about these. Because the number two or inside verticals, some teams run them where they run way out here. Other teams run it where they just want that inside vertical to be just like a normal vertical, but from the inside spot. So right here, to me, this is his track. You have the ability as a quarterback to use all this space, but you prefer to throw this thing right down his track and give him a chance, let him hit it in stride, especially with this kind of space. You can't miss way behind him back here on a flat ball. If you're going to miss outside, you got to have this thing be a huge trajectory balloon over here to give him a chance to make a play. But again, sometimes the defense is going to win, and they got him right here. Ingram, this is what happens when you got a star player on the defensive line. One more time, just appreciate the spin move here. Tight, boop, got him. Still doesn't even smack him, just impacts the throw enough, you know. Next one here, this is an interception. Now, this to me is, is a combination of a great play call and a bummer of a design or execution. I don't, I don't know who's at fault here. What concept-wise, I think we get a little 10-yard stop route down here to the bottom. And we get what I'm going to say is like a double in but it could be a post from the tight end. And, and the thing about it is this is usually a sign of a poorly designed or executed play. If you can't tell what it is, it's probably not good. But I love the pass pro. We'll talk about this. This is a staple West Coast pass pro here, either called H2 usually. We'll talk about it from the tight. But again, what they're trying to do here, the essence of this thing, I'll draw it up so we understand how the pick happens. But the essence of this thing is if you get free access, and what I mean by that is if you like this, and there's nobody, he's not bump. You can come out here and rip a 10 yard stop route, go for it. Otherwise, we're going to call this a 10 yard in. It could be a post. Either way, it's an in breaking route back over here. I think it's a better play if it's an in route, to be honest with you. So I'll go with an in route. And then this next in route, to me, it's just a sloppy route and it's too tight of a design. If you're going to run double in or an in with a post here, you need like a burst release out here to create more space for that hole. Either way, so we come up, we get this tight little sloppy in or post, and then we get this rounded in. This guy, he, I think he starts making the cut at right around the 35, and then he kind of rounds this thing in. And we end up throwing a pick here because this thing is too tight. I love the anticipation of what he's trying to do. He's trying to anticipate this thing into a hole, which is a great thing to see. But the decision to me is, a, is more than a little wrong. This ball, if this gets blurry, what I mean by that is if this first level defenders here or second level defenders, whatever the linebacker defenders, however you refer to them, if they get depth to take away any type of route behind him, most professional quarterbacks will come back here and they'll throw the check down faster than the guy can turn around. It's a screen. But to me, this shows, this was one of the, the plays that showed a little bit of inexperience, poor decision making. You see that check down is wide open on the right tempo. Right there, the ball goes to the back. And we'll see it from the back end. But here comes that in route. Now, to me, again, this spacing is too tight. One guy, anytime one guy can cover two, all sorts of wrong. Okay, so we need this guy blowing through here faster, and we need to wrap it right into this hole, what he's trying to do, and have that ball come right in here. But because these guys are too tight, the tight end and the flank and the Z here are too tight, we're able to let this one DB play both routes. 
and he's trying to force this thing in. This thing needs to go to the tailback half a second ago, right here. So it's one, two, three, whatever, play fake, back here, top of the drop. No, yes, right here. We'll see the tempo of it from the back. It's a little bit easier to see the back. Now, he makes a nice play on the ball, but again, this is too tight of a window to throw. Decision-making, miss it a little bit. It's not the easiest to see from the All-22. I think it's a little bit easier from the back end, just as far as the tempo and rhythm and the decision to go to the check down, but just the ability to get to the check down. It's graduate level stuff. Even guys in the league aren't being able to do it all the time. So again, this pass pro to me is, uh, let me run it back here to show you the check down, right? That ball goes to the check down right there. It's on the same rhythm as the, your one or two read right there to 28. Boom, get it to him. There's nobody around him. And we can see that window's there. But that's, you got to have a little bit more time. You got to wait for it. You can see it starting to develop. But to me, it's still too. We got defender, defender, because that tight end's route took too long or was too slow. We're not able to get that thing in there, wrap it. Ball needs to go right to there. Easy for me to say with a clicker and a little marker. But again, learning to hit those check downs, that's a fast way to keep your career going. Now, pass pro wise, the thing I love about it, and the reason I really love this play, especially when Bosa is right here. The guy's a beast now. He's right here. Okay, so if you're going to leave him one on one, because this is a slide protection, these four guys are sliding to this guy right here, the will. Okay, this to me is how I would identify it as just an under front. End, nose, three, end. So four defensive linemen. Here's the Sam, the Mike, the will, and the free safety. Okay, so we're going to leave this free safety thinking he's not coming. You could identify theoretically here as the mic, but I'm going to guess that they went, this is the will. These four are going right here. Okay, so they're going to take nose, end, and here, however they come. Then the back right here, you can see him looking for him. He's got the mic. The fullback has the Sam right here. But the beautiful thing about this pass pro, and I've had it called Hound 2, H2, all that really means is that the back is coming through the two hole. Usually, that's how they're going to exit, and he's going to exit outside. So really, this ends up being a double team, or the basically you got two walls, two kind of side blockers for whoever you want on this side from the offensive line, which right here is right here. So what I mean by that, I'm going off on a tangent here, but it's worth it when you're dealing with a beast like this right here. So he's going to get, theoretically, a one-on-one -on -one block, right? These four guys are turning back to this guy. So he's on an island. The right tackle, theoretically, is on an island. But he's really not because he's got these two side bumpers. So we'll see it here. He's able to basically know that he's got help either way with Bosa right here. So it's a great way to basically leave a guy one-on-one, -on -one, but really it's three-on-one. -on -one. It's a nice little trick right there. You see you got bumpers on both sides. Really great job. The fullback does a great job hitting him right back onto the tackle. You got side help on both sides. Nice little trick they'd use in the West Coast offense all the time. And everybody uses it. But this is a great example of it, especially against a really good player. So again, one, two, three. No, get it to the back. Live to fight another day. Who cares if you have to punt? Who cares if you got a third medium? Can't force the ball like that, especially on a on a throw you don't need to. When the guys, when once you understand why it's covered, you'll realize that someone else is open. Then this is a play that I thought was a really cool design. Great little job at the end of the game, basically to give them a chance. They got it one play to get down there, kick a field goal to win it. What did they do? They run kind of a little angle, deep corner at the top of the screen where the ball goes. But then if they if that wasn't there, check out what they got going down here at the bottom of the screen. They got a little swing screen going. So theoretically, you get a little like rugby play at the end of the game. Give yourself a chance if it's not there. I love the fact that they come in here and all they do Picking on Hayward again with Sutton. He had a rough day. No doubt about it. All you're going to do is give your guy a chance. He runs in and he runs out. If it's one-on-one -on -one or he gets past him, which I think he does, just throw it up, give your guy a chance, and a penalty is just as good as a catch right here. Again, the footwork from the back of the pocket, I love it. I haven't watched a whole lot of Drew Locke college career, but that footwork at the back of the pocket, that to me shows a guy who has coached really well for a really long time. And then you give yourself a chance. I like the decision. Love the opportunity to just go up there and give yourself a chance. 
Again, really nice job by the right tackle here, holding off Bosa. Go up, give your guy a chance. There it is. So as far as a debut, I thought there were a really a number of really positive things. I don't think as the body of work, you know, I didn't put in every single pass, every single miss, but I think that there were some misses that are concerning. And just like I gave one example of it, but I think the thing that I think will help and the thing that makes me feel more excited about his future than anything else is the footwork in the kind of mechanics from the pocket at the top of the drop. There's an opportunity to be really, really consistent. And that to me should be really exciting for the Denver fans and the and Bronco community because he looks like he's going to give himself an opportunity to be accurate a lot. I think the decision-making, the ability to identify, those things already look like they're starting to kind of show up as far as being able to beat zero, being able to take advantage of DB's mistakes, decision-making at the end of the game. I think that there was a lot of positive. Now, it wasn't all perfect by no means. You know, you got to throw for more yards than that probably over the course of a game, over the course of a season. But as far as the decision-making in the crucial downs, some of those third downs, the end of the game, Really excited. Looks like he's got an opportunity to have a really bright future. I'm excited to see what Denver does the rest of the way. Should be a good one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support. See you next time.